Thanks, guys. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Drag Show. I'm Stu Smith. With me is Stephen Leader, our production uh, manager, and our guests, Nancy French and Dan Nicoletta. Thank you both for joining us tonight. Uh, there's lots to talk about, isn't there? Hi, Stu. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for you. joining us again. You're welcome. Nancy's been on the show once before. It's uh, my privilege and honor to meet you face to face, face to face in a studio. Thank you. Thank What's you, new Stu. with each of you? You both are here because of Pearls Over Shanghai. Uh, tell us a little bit about it, your connections. Well, I think Dan can start because he goes back the farthest with Pearls. I read a little <laughs> bit about that. You go back to the real, the original cockpits, I think. Um, not really. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, something that everybody assumes because I'm such a big groupie, but actually I miss the cockpits. Okay. Uh, I didn't come to San Francisco till 1975. Five, so five I, years plus yeah little late. but I, I knew about them and I sought them out and I chased them all around town like a little puppy dog trying to get the definitive shots of them and it was the beginning of a long working relationship with many of the coquettes who, who continued to do theater after so the where were they hanging after the palace theater you know in that period well you know there were clubs where pristine condition and people were performing and then there were new theater groups that they were forming under other nomenclature and so it really was a thing that never stopped but uh -huh. it stopped being called the cockettes okay yeah because i know i've worked with scrumbly over the years in all sorts of different things from theater to jazz halls and uh, the plush room all sorts of stuff mm -hmm. and he continues to perform write do all of his stuff He's, and act yeah. he's quite a guy yeah I'm going to his new show this coming Friday, uh, Cowardly Things. Cowardly with, Things. Yeah. And where is that playing? That's at the New Conservatory Theater, and uh, he has a long-standing collaboration with Cindy Goldfield, and they're just marvelous together. Yeah, and yeah. that's a great little theater, too, yeah. New Conservatory. is at 25 Van Ness I, uh, Market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our buddy Scott Scrumbly it will be there in the play is... Cowardly things. Cowardly yes. things. This is the last weekend. It's like oh, uh, you got to rush if you want to see it. Yeah, and it's probably nearly sold out. I okay. Imagine, yeah. Okay. So. Well, uh, pearls has been extended how many times now? <laughs> I've lost track. Somewhere between nine or ten extensions, I think. <laughs> well, I saw it right at the beginning, and then we came, we went back to see it maybe three or four more times, yeah. and. Uh, I just keep getting messages. It's been extended. Lawrence Hellman will send me something. Everybody's <laughs> sending something, you know. And but it's great to have an endless supply of friends who come and go from San Francisco who are dying to see it because the buzz is all over the country. Yeah. Or at yeah. least where they have uh, modern communication devices. <laughs> and an endless supply of your friends who've been in it at this point. Uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, that's really been a wonderful honor, you know. And they keep adding to it. That's you know? right. I think it's become a real. Um, landing place for a lot of performers in San Francisco. Lots of people from the drag community uh -huh. are coming through and getting their turn sort of on the stage in different roles in Pearls, multiple roles in Pearls. Um, I've done four different roles myself so far in the 14 months that wow. I've been in it. And people like Jeff Valentine has played two or three different roles. So it is, it's, it's become somewhere that everyone kind of wants to be in for just at least, you know, a little moment of their career. So it's, it's been great. And then for all of us to be able to collaborate together, it just <laughs> makes it more fun. And every week, every weekend when there's a different person in there, someone new, it keeps it fresh, keeps it very exciting for the cast members who've been in it from the get-go. It, it, it's an incredibly exciting production, you know. I don't know really what to call it. I mean, it's, it's scripted. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but... I think what knocked me out the first time was the costuming and the makeup. Right. You know, you you have a great storyline that's very simple, uh, but it's the the production values are incredible. Yeah, and they keep getting better. I think we've come a long way. We set out to do just an eight week run. I remember. <laughs> and you know, didn't really know what we we're getting into. Took a lot of our direction from Rumi and Scrumbly and some of the other old coquette ray of um angels of light people and just we kind of took it on and now i think we've kind of made it our own and taken it to the next level and it's still very coquettes it's very modern day coquettes yeah especially with all the you know unexpected things that may happen in the night so yeah <laughs> and, and you never know do you you that never know surprise and the big cast of characters that come in and out of it keeps it sort of in that coquettes you know feel i think 
So. So Dan, were you involved with this this production from kind of the beginning with the Thrill Peddlers group and some of the cockettes that are in it? Yeah, uh, actually, I had the good fortune of um, inviting myself to do the very first publicity shots for Pearls Over Shanghai when it went to New York for the Howl Festival. Oh, wow. And, well, actually, when it came back, I thought, this thing is never going to really can come together the way people dream that it might, so I better photograph this phenomenon while it's still happening. And this was... This was a just little um, spontaneous photo call that we did with, you know, on the promise that maybe, you know, the hidden drum would do pearls again. <clears throat> so it was really in its very sort of initial inception, and, and uh, I think there's one photo from that photo call. So you could see the costuming is not quite as over the top as it became, and it was kind of an idea whose time had come, but we had no idea it was going to become as huge as it did. Yeah, <coughs> it's it's kind of ironic because I, the one thing that comes to mind, and it's entirely different, is the uh, commercial longevity that uh, Beach Blanket has had, mm -hmm. and this is kind of more what San Francisco was really known for, was kind of bohemian or uh, grassroots uh, theater, you mm -hmm. know, and... Uh, and yet, with those production values in that great little tiny weird theater, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, the shock boxes, and mm -hmm. you know, it's it's fabulous. Free popcorn, you That's know, right. it's a real great kind of a, a event. Every show is an event. Yeah, very intimate, and yeah. I think the audience feels like they're part of it. Scrumbly now in his curtain speech says to them that there's you know there's one member of the cast who's not printed on the program tonight and that's the role of the coquette's audience there'd be 1200 of them the drugs would be kicking in they'd maybe throw their clothes on stage at any given moment and they would erupt in loud uh, uproarious applause at any given moment and that's the role played by you the audience so that really brings them into that's it that's good i haven't, it, I haven't it's seen really that good yet. It's a kind of a newer thing he started to do, just to allow them to like you're part of this. Yeah, get you know, into the, it. we've already broken that wall because you're basically sitting on this, you know, part of the stage with us. We're going to touch you. <laughs> you're going to be part of this, whether you like it or not. You're probably going to get some glitter on you. So, <laughs> get used to it. Get into it, and you know, right off the bat, that really puts them in the right mood, because yeah. that is part of it. It's a you know, there's almost you know, there's it's a 45 seat house with 23 people in the show, so <laughs> they only outnumber us two to one. They're, I know. they're pretty it's, much part it's of amazing, it. It's amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean. Has Russell, have you all thought about a bigger venue? We don't really think, like the idea of it because good, we like that good. we do it sort of in our home and that the the surroundings that we're in and the way that the stage and the house is set up, it plays into the story. So we like the way it is. 